Hi, welcome to today's Peace of Peace. Starting off again with a Heart of Gratitude, writing out our top 10 things that um, bring our mindset into one of thankfulness, one of gratitude, brings peace to our body, especially in an uncertain world, which it is right now, um, to grab that mindset and start to think about the things that we are so grateful for and focus on a heavenly perspective. So today I started off, it was raining this morning, so I was thanking the Lord and having gratitude just for the rain, the way that sounds, how it gives water to everything that needs it, including us. I was having gratitude for friends, gratitude for reconciliation. As I was sitting there, I just, it was sort of a chilly morning and I love having a candle burning when I'm reading my Bible and I said I had gratitude just for that having this sweet little presence of that warm and inviting God's presence in there I had gratitude for Italian espresso with collagen and coconut creamer I will forever have gratitude for that um, for a warm dry house because there's many who don't have that for yesterday's service at our church it was on fire with the Holy Spirit. I just loved it immeasurably. The Lord had a message for us and it was really poignant and beautiful because to put aside what we go to rather than God and to what was <laughs> to what is seeking him for everything and what how much more he has for us in doing so. It was great. Our pastor was just um, really bringing a uh, on earth as it was in heaven yesterday. It was beautiful. I was thanking God for a breakthrough in my Monday morning check-ins. I had um, gotten stuck into, uh, the Lord had told me about a year ago just to focus on him in my health. Just start to include him on decisions on foods, decisions on exercise, things like that, and, and watch how things would change as I took me trying to do things on my own and putting it back into perspective of, Lord, um, outside of you, I can't do this, but with you, I can. And, and he was just sort of showing me some breakthrough pieces because a lot of our mindset, mm, for me, it was a lot of past, past pain and unforgiveness that kind of bound me in uh, a, just being stuck in, in just a healthy body, being stuck in an unhealthy body. So as God started to draw me into repentance, forgiveness, things like that, I'm watching things grow healthier and healthier in every aspect of my life, mindset, spoken word, action, and it, and it physically comes out on our physical beings when we are set free from old patterns to new, when we move from unforgiveness to forgiveness, when we move from pride to repentance, it, it changes us. Physically, it changes us. So God, I was thanking him for breakthrough and of course I had gratitude for worship. I had gratitude for his word and, um, and I did a little PS on there because Somebody turned us on to this little show called um, The Chosen. Oh, my word. Yesterday, we watched this episode, and I'm not a TV watcher. So it's just like, I'm not going to want to go flip through the channels, and I, I would rather be outside. <laughs> I'd rather be in a book, uh, as long as it's a book is something that I'm interested in, and I want, and I'm choosing to read it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not so happy with all the books I have to read for school, and because uh, I'm always in paper writing mode then and I'm not enjoying it as much but do like it love to learn but um so this show go back to the show so this show and speaking of um the time when Jesus was just coming preparation of his um appearance on earth and then his appearance on earth and and Nicodemus who was one of the Pharisees had this inquisitiveness and just this hope of this being the Messiah coming on earth and and it really was one of the sweetest episodes I've seen where he meets up with Jesus and has a conversation with him. And just the excitement and the anticipation in Nicodemus's face and Jesus holding him. 
and realizing he's hugging the son of God. <laughs> oh, you guys, it just took me out. It just totally took me out. And um, someday we get to do that as believers. We get to hold on to the son of God. My heart's going to come out of my chest thinking of that. Um, but these were things I had incredible gratitude for this morning. In um, thanking him for some sweet friends we got to spend the weekend with and these three little dollies that grabbed a hold of my heart and it took me forever just to learn their names because <laughs> they're just so uniquely them and um, Kaylee is one and um, Tayson is another and one is called Kennedy but I believe they call her Kenna and just their little hearts to come around wanting to know about Jesus. We sat in our camper and I had my guitar and we were just sort of prophetically worshiping and I sang a prayer over them. And and then um, we played some music and they were just pounding out some beats and just beautiful little souls. I, uh, I just fell in love with them. Such sweet, sweet little dollies. Sweet little dollies. Looking very forward to getting to know them more but their heart for Jesus and their hunger. It's just like, that is why God says, come to me as little children, because they're like sponges. They just want to hear what and what and what and what is he doing? Who is he and what did he do? And it was just like so amazing just to sit and chat with them. Delight of my heart over the weekend. But so those were my gratitudes and brought me into our last day of August, you guys. I feel like time's exponentially flying by. But our last day of August, and this um, this particular, it's Our Daily Bread is the devotional piece that I read from, but the particular author of today's was Glenn um, Peckium, and uh, he's in First Samuel, which is one of my son's names, and which is why he's named this. <laughs> um, but uh, we're going to be reading in three, we're going to go one through ten. And it's a very good devotion today. Underlined a ton of it. So, the backdrop on Samuel. Samuel's mom, Hannah. She, she was barren for so long. No children. Desperately wanted children. And um, prayed to God and prayed to God and said, If you, Lord, you know how like we kind of make deals with God. Hannah was making a deal with God. If you do this, then I'll do this. <laughs> but... Her deal because she was so having a child just um, was like the biggest gift God could give still is a huge gift and to me has been the biggest gift that he's been able to give me um, but Hannah pleaded with her king please allow me to have a child if you do I after he is after he's weaned I, I will give him to the priest to be raised in, in your house so that he will serve you all the days of his life. And so he did. And she offered him this beautiful son named Samuel. And um, at the wee age of, I believe, around five or six, he was brought to um, Eli, the priest, to be raised in the house of God to serve the Lord all the days of his life. One of the most profound prophets of um, the Bible. And uh, as I read, I will start um, in one. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. The Lord would speak in visions and dreams. One night, and I want to point that out again. It said, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Like not many were hearing his voice. Does this sound familiar? How many of us are hearing his voice? As believers, how many of you are hearing his voice? It sounds familiar to me. I mean, I'm going to correlate this when we get into the devotional piece. But the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli the priest. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare and there were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not gone. The lamp of God had not yet gone down, out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the Ark of the Covenant was. 
Then the Lord called Samuel. Broke through the silence of being rare from being heard of, but the Lord called Samuel. He says, Samuel. And Samuel answered, I am here. And he ran to Eli and said, "Um, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call you, go back and lie down. So Samuel did not, now Samuel um, did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time. (laughs) And Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there, calling calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then, Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, Let me see if I'm going. And the Lord said to Samuel, I'm going to go on because I want to use this in the devotion. That's where 10 ends. But the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. And at that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons made themselves contemptible and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned by sacrifice or offering. Samuel was afraid to talk to Eli about this. When he woke up, Eli was asking him, what did the Lord say? And he was like afraid and he says, you have to tell me what the Lord said. And so Samuel told him everything. And Eli said, let it be so whatever the Lord says needs to be. But um, the devotion starts with this. It's called The Servant Hears. I do pray that our ears are opened up to him more and more and more. And that we will come to hear him more in our visions, in our dreams, and in his spoken word, in our thoughts. More and more and more. We desperately need him. The devotion starts. Had the wireless radio been on, they would have known the Titanic was sinking. Cyril Evans, the radio operator of another ship, had tried to relay a message to Jack Phillips, the radio operator of the Titanic, letting him know they had encountered an ice field. But Phillips was busy relaying passengers' messages and rudely told Evans to be quiet. So Evans reluctantly turned off his radio and went to bed. Ten minutes later, the Titanic struck an iceberg. Their distress signals went unanswered because no one was listening. In 1 Samuel, we read that the priests of Israel were corrupt and had lost their spiritual sight and hearing as the nation drifted into danger. I want to repeat that. And think of today. How about today? In 2020, we read that there is so much corruption and we've lost our spiritual sight and hearing and that our nation is drifting into danger. The word of the Lord was rare as it is today. There were not many visions. Yet God wouldn't give up on his people he began to speak to a young boy named Samuel who was being raised in the priest's household. Samuel's name means the Lord hears. A memorial to God's answer, his mother's prayer. But Samuel would need to learn how to hear God. Speak for your servant is listening. I want to go back to that. But Samuel would need to learn how to hear God. We need to learn how to hear God. 
Speak, for your servant is listening. It's the servant who hears. It's the servant who hears. I'm going to say it again. It's the servant who hears. You will hear his voice. May we also choose to listen and to obey what God has revealed in the scriptures. Let's submit our lives to him and take the posture of humble servants. Those who have their radios turned on. So our talk yesterday in our church was about, are we listening to him? What are we going to? How is he being able to use us to our full capacity if we're going to other things rather than God? And, and as we spend time with him, we will be more attuned to his voice. For sure. Speak to me. For your servant is listening. It's the servant who hears. May we also choose to listen and to obey what God has revealed in the scriptures. Let's submit our lives to him and take the posture of humble servants, those who have their radios tuned in and turned on. Samuel made himself available to listen to the voice of God. Are you making yourself available? Am I? I want to hear everything he has to say in this time. I want to follow just him, his mindset, his spoken word, his action. I want to hear his voice clearly to absolutely speak over all the other uh, voices we have coming at us in this time. Glenn's charge to us is this. Why is it vital for you to obey what God has revealed in Scripture? How can you stay tuned in to his voice? And his prayer is this. Dear Jesus, thank you for being a speaking God. Thank you for the Scriptures that help me follow you in obedience. Speak. Your servant is listening. And that is our piece of peace.